Hi everyone, this is Andrew Tsai. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be looking at this early 2015 MacBook Pro 13 inch and we are looking at this battery. So at the moment we can see that there's a problem with this battery where it's asking us to service the battery and when we look at the power information within the system report we can see that it's had a relatively modest 574 cycles but it's still asking us to service the battery. So these batteries, they tend to degrade over time and you will need to replace it um, after several years. Uh, I imagine this one's been in constant use for five years. And uh, although I would say the cycle count of 574 is kind of low, um, I would expect this kind of service battery message to come up after, you know, six, 700, maybe a thousand charges. But uh, I think you've got your money's worth if you've managed to charge it more than five, 600 times. So it's, um, Time to replace this battery. So what I've done is I've bought this uh, Kajami third-party battery from Amazon. And what we're gonna do is install this into the machine. So the first thing we're gonna do is completely turn off the computer. And then we're going to open up the bottom case. So to take off the bottom plate screws, we're gonna use the screwdrivers that came with the battery. So a lot of these batteries, they come with the right screwdrivers and these uh, pentalobe screws um, require a special kind of screwdriver, which you'll see here. And um, it has five points and is unique to MacBooks. So if you um, Google around for MacBook screwdrivers, they'll often come with these um, 1.2 mil pentalobe screwdrivers. But uh, a lot of the Mac products you buy online now, now come with them. So all we're gonna do is uh, take off the screws. So once that's done, we can now lift up the bottom case and we get to the computer, the battery. So um, this is the battery unit, which we're gonna replace with this new third party battery. And um, the difficulty with this the difficulty with this battery is that it has quite strong adhesives glued in. So we're gonna to have to figure out a way to deal with that. The first thing we need to do is um, take off this bit of uh, plastic and it has kind of dirt and stuff stuck to this adhesive. This kind of is supposed to protect this circuitry. Um, and then what we're gonna do is remove this uh, battery here, which connects to logic board, so we don't short anything out by accident. Then we're gonna take our T6 screwdriver. This one came with the actual uh, battery itself. And then we're gonna remove these covers so we can take off this uh, circuitry here which is going over the battery. So we take off these two screws here. So that little cover here covers this um, small connector here, which is just gonna kind of peel off. And um, I'm gonna keep that on there. And um, the next thing to do is to take off this actual battery. So if you if you look at it, it's actually not stuck in any other way except through adhesive on the bottom here. So what I normally use is um, isopropyl alcohol to help loosen up the adhesives. And we're gonna use a plastic spudger. You could use a credit card or something like that, but something strong like this will help lift up the uh, the battery cells. So it's very, very important that you do not use a screwdriver because the metal is going to split the, the cell and you could start a fire. So it's extremely important you be very careful with this. Um, you can also take out the speakers as well for a bit more leverage. Um, I don't really think that's necessary, but we're going to do it this time. Now we're going to go for it. So normally what I do is I just spray some isopropyl down the bottom. start taking, levering out the uh, the battery cells. So 
So this is going to take a really long time to, to do. So I like to get this a bit deeper in and I'm going to leave it out with my thumb like this. You can kind of hear some of the adhesive um, splitting or breaking. You should use something <clears throat> which does not going to pierce the cell because that's kind of dangerous. I can feel my I can feel it get um, giving a bit more give at the moment. It's going to leave this whole thing out. So I'm kind of pushing this in further, and you know I'm lucky my spot is not broken yet. You can hear that? It's all coming off now. It's pretty good. See, this big cell just kind of pops out quite easily. Um, you know, no need for any fancy dental floss or anything like that. This method, just a strong plastic spudger will leave that thing out quite easily. A little bit of isopropyl. Just be careful you don't put too much in. Um, you don't want any of the fluids to mix with the adhesive, to, which would get into other sensitive parts of the computer. Just want to be aware of levering against the speaker part because it's, that's plastic, whereas the rest of this is like aluminium. Can you hear that just popping up? Okay, that's just come out. I'm going to do the other side as well. So just do the same thing again, just levering this edge, pulsing it down. This left side adhesive is a bit stronger, so you need to get more leverage in there. You work on it long enough and it will come out. Good, that one's sorting out. <clears throat> so the next stage is this center part, which is, um, there's this kind of black metal plate here, which is kind of hard to get out. So um, you don't want to overdo it too much with the alcohol, but it will help quite a lot. So, I mean, this isopropyl is inert for uh, electronics. So you can spray it on electronics and it'll be fine. It's, uh, it won't corrode or anything because it's pure, pure, alco it's pure alcohol pretty much. But um, you don't want the adhesive mixing in with your electronics here or here. So just be aware of that. And also be aware that this is where the trackpad lives. So um, the trackpad itself is quite a sensitive piece of kit. So you want to be careful with um, how you do that.
This one's kind of going to lever against itself. Let's see how this goes. So the adhesive here is really strong, so be careful not to damage the cell itself. Don't split this. I mean, you can see that it's kind of bent here, but do not split them because uh, if you see smoke and things right coming out of it, you, I would uh, get out of there quickly. <laughs> so same deal again. It's going to kind of push this through yeah one thing I'll do now is take out the this screw here which is holding in this um, assembly there so that this whole uh, battery can come out. And so we just got the, the one cell left here. So once again, just kind of push it in. When you're pushing in, you're kind of breaking the adhesive underneath it, so you have to be quite firm. And done, we have taken out the old battery. All that remains now is uh, we need to kind of clean this up a little bit and get it ready for the new battery to go in. So yeah, it wasn't too bad. So once the battery is removed, we just need to get rid of the remnants of any adhesive left on here so we can put a new battery in. So normally I just like to use a bit more isopropyl just to get rid of anything else left there. And I um, use a spudger to just pull off the last little bits of this kind of double-sided sticky tape, which is remaining here. Just going to clean this up. Okay, then I'm just going to use some kitchen towel just to wipe it up and the remaining adhesive. Um, so now that we've uh, cleaned up this bottom case, all we need to do is um, add the uh, replacement third-party battery in. So um, these normally come with these two kinds of plastic films. So this one is just a, 
uh, protective film on top. Um, the bottom one is an adhesive film, so we just need to make sure that we position it in correctly. Now, if we just take this off, this will mean that we have these kind of sticky, strong adhesives on the back, which we need to make sure we stick into the correct place. So um, the only challenge here is just making sure that we get this uh, edge cell underneath the speaker which I'm going to do for you now. So I'm going to show you, we just position and slide there. And the same with this, we just position it and slide underneath. So that cell goes there without sticking in the wrong place. Okay, good. Um, yeah, so. So if it's kind of in the wrong place then here, like here, we just, you just push it over slightly. And um, as long as we don't press them in until we are completely sure it's ready, then um, we get them in the right position. So the main thing is that we have a, uh, the cabling to go here, which I'll, which I'll put in. And we've got that screws in the right place, which we're gonna use our T6 to screw back in. A lot of these screws are like completely unnecessary because once you've once you've got that adhesive in really that strongly, it's never going never going to come off. And you know we're packed so tightly into this case anyway. When we put the bottom plate back on, that it doesn't really make a difference because the the batteries are basically glued in. So now I'm going to pop this cable back in into the correct position there. And, you know, you don't have the tightest possible fit here because um, it is a third party uh, battery. But, you know, that's pretty good. Uh, I'm going to plug the um, trackpad back in to here. And then we're going to put the um, plate on top. It's going to protect it slightly. I'm going to use our T6 again. Good. Then it's time to put our bottom case back on and make sure it's nice and um, flat. So yeah, that means that the battery is not bulging incorrectly. So um, now that the battery is installed, we can see in the system report that we have a brand new battery with one cycle count and it's got a decent charge of uh, 6,224 milliamp hours. So brand new battery, this MacBook Pro 2015 is going to last a little while longer. And uh, the, the service battery icon is now gone. So if I, if I unplug the power, so if I unplug the power now, it's all going to work fine. It's 100% charged. So um, this is a way to buy some more time for your um, MacBook Pro after the battery has kind of died. And, you know, it's not that difficult to do. Um, so anyway, if you found this video useful, please like and subscribe and leave a comment if you made use of it at all. And I'll see you in the next tech video.